and welcome to another episode of Coffee With. I'm your host, Sena Bujang, and with me, I believe, you know, I don't think I should tell you who it is because he's someone in the past few days has been on everyone's lips. Um, everyone's been talking about him. And I think he deserves it because um, of what he has done, what he has said. It's very important to highlight. So with that introduction, I will not tell you his name. I'll let him do that himself. Yeah, thank you, Senabu, for having me. And I am Usman Ture, a fresh graduate from the University of the Gambia with a major in development studies. Thank you. Okay, Usman, thank you for coming on the Coffee With platform. Um, one of my favorite questions and always my first is for you to tell us who was Usman Ture before he became a young graduate, um, a fresh graduate from UTG and also a Pan-Africanist. Usman Ture is just, you know, an ordinary Gambian as any other individual. I started my schooling career in provincial Gambia and that is how I moved to uh, Sincho Alaji and I was going to Masul Senior Secondary School. That's where I graduated in 2016 and as one of the most outstanding students, of course. And in the same year, I moved to the University of the Gambia and finally graduated in 2019. So the spirit of Pan-Africanism is something that I found in literatures written by Pan-Africans, both in Africa and people in the diaspora. So that has always been the inspiration and that has always been the motivation as to why I have some of these terms towards Pan-African spirit. Thank you. So you touched on a little bit about um, what inspired you to go into Pan-Africanism and study it further and just have your own views on, on the subject. Um, but now it would be nice to know how and what it was like growing up as a young Usman Ture because you mentioned that you studied in the provincial Gambia. So tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, thank you very much. And as you said, like uh, we know how it is. Uh, you know, it has to be a struggle. And of course, all great struggles demand sacrifice. And studying at Provincial Gambia, of course, yes, there are, you know, it is hectic at some point. But the belief is that when the desirable is not available, the availability, the available becomes desirable. So what really happened is believing in it and focusing in it and believing that education is the only way out of, you know, poverty. It is the only way out of ignorance and it is the only way to the glorious light. So because of these issues, we have always been, you know, working towards our education and giving it all that we can reading beyond the curriculums of course and that has always been our motivation and that is what we do so and moving to you know the combos for instance for you know to at least be more exposed because sometimes we have difficulty in accessing some materials that you know you can be at the provincial gambia you want to read certain books you cannot have access to but when I came to the combos, you know, that became a thing of the past. I could access, you know, books, I could access materials as much as I want. So I was just reading. So that is it. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I was very, very stubborn because that is what people <laughs> say about me. So, yeah, that, that I was this kind of person, you know, that, that always, you know, challenge people whenever they talk about issues, you know. And then that is it. And it, it really helps me a lot because I was not, you know, that aggressive individual, that quiet individual at a childhood, at my childhood days. So that makes it very easy for me to interact with people, to understand the society and the environment in which I grew up from. So that has always been the motivation because you interact with people to know their problems. You interact with people in order to develop solution to those societal problems and that has always been a strength in me because i more of like interact with any individual that i come across and i never have a problem with tolerance and then you know working towards with individual making sure that we have an agenda that is in the interest of the gambia and in the interest of africa at large now let's talk about your interest and what inspired you to you know delve deeper into pan-africanism you've mentioned just now um reading beyond books you know reading so much that you have an idea of how to develop and what you want to do for gambia and beyond so tell us about that because it all connects with you know being a pan-africanist and trying to make change and wanting change and working towards it as young people as well so just tell us a bit about that what what inspired you to you know 
go into it and go for it. Yes, so uh, as you said, looking at Pan-Africanism, uh, it was embraced by individuals who had Africa at heart and have African interests at heart. So the main pioneers were not people born in Africa, but they were African descent living in the diaspora and understand that in order to liberate a continent like Africa, we must understand the root of our education. We must understand the root of our values in our cultures, our tradition as a continent. So as a result of this, if you interact with their literatures, you come to realize that they were ready to set a positive pattern for our development, to set a positive pattern for the world to see this positive image about this continent and not just show the negative side of it. And why was it that we find it difficult to embrace these agendas? You come to realize that there are outside forces out there who just don't want to see us succeeding as a continent. They don't want to see us succeeding as a race. So, and they have been giving us advices. They've been asking us to adapt policies that doesn't work. They've been asking us to try, you know, ideas, ideologies, you know, that that does not work for us. So, I as an individual have the belief that we need to look into what the pan-african spirit is what were the pan-africanists speaking about the continent and then what were the development that they old were uh, like having as an as something that they wanted to see in this very continent so that we can fight together to achieve that and that was the reason why we have people like in kuma and others you know in 1963 calling for the unification of the continent that if we do not get rid of the disconnection happening between us as a continent then therefore we will not be able to defeat our common enemy and that is those outsiders that are looking for ways to exploit us ways to uh, oppress us and then ways to impose racist belief and etc on us so since your video has gone viral You know the video I'm talking about, right? Yeah, like that video for me when I saw it, I was like, who is this young man? This young man speaks so eloquently. You know, he's talking about issues, ideologies, like you just said, that, um, you know, resonate so well with um, what's surrounding us. And um, I must tell you, and I'm pretty sure you're aware, your video went, like it went everywhere everyone was sharing it posting it in groups and i think i was like you know what i need to reach out to this guy this guy needs to come on coffee with he needs to be my next guest i don't know how long it will take but we need to get him on the platform because the whole idea of coffee with is to talk to young people that are inspiring others that are inspirations to many so i was like yeah usman Trey needs to come and that's how i did my homework and here we are today so thank you for coming once again and i appreciate it um i know you're very busy but you know and aren't we all right so that's what i'm talking about so your video since you released it or since it was shared um you know what inspired you to actually you know allow someone to say okay let me video this guy he's going to talk about these things or whatever it is he has to talk about there must have been a motive behind it right tell us about that we want we want to know we all want to know yeah thank you very much yeah looking at the video uh juliet the one that interviewed me is i saw her on youtube so i sub subscribed to her channel she is doing extremely well so in a positive pic- uh, picture about gambia a positive picture about africa to our brothers and sisters living in the diaspora for them to understand that they can also do it in africa that they don't have to invest all they have in the west at the end you can die and then that's the end of it but if you invest in africa it stays here it can benefit generations to come so as a result of this i saw her and then i walked to her i said i recognize you and i'm a subscriber to your channel she said wow that's amazing you cannot just leave without giving me an interview or having an interview with me so that's how the interview come about and i just spoke my mind nobody is going to do it for us that's right if we are all running away you know when are we gonna make it we have to stay in africa develop in africa and then show to the world that africa have a better image than the one they portray in the west and that's exactly how i feel about the country we have to show the beautiful things that we have as a continent we have to show the beautiful things that we have as a country that is what attracts investment and not showing negative things that will only attract aids and donors to come 
what we need is investment not donors not it it just makes us lazy so what happened is that i talk about the values that we have in our country you work around the gambia you come to realize that you have friendly people in the country we have things we say a lot together as a people we have different religions but yet we live harmoniously between us and you see that is what makes our society what it is so we need to value these things and then we need to preserve them and by doing that we can also sell out this positive picture about our country this positive picture about the continent to the outside uh, to the outside world not because we want aids to come or we want donors to come in what we want is real investment massive investment that is going to involve the youths massive investment that is going to make sure that we protect this generation we protect generations to come but we cannot do that as long as we just want to rely on another race any leadership any leadership that teaches an individual to depend on another race that leadership is something that will enslave you so we have to do away from all those kind of leadership and then to make sure that we understand the values of the african continent and set a pattern for our own development using africans both in africa and those in the diaspora that that's very important to know um to understand that we as africans you know need to be more independent um we need to drift away from the negative stereotypes and i believe that's that's how you know africa has been portrayed for a long time but you know things are changing now and i think with young people like yourself um juliet i'm 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 a fan with her I'm, um i've seen her many times she's doing an amazing job um you know we need more like that to encourage people to want to come to gambia and invest and um, for the right reasons as well so moving on as a young pan african you've already shared your views on um how the gambia should be how africa should be as a whole but um do you think this is challenging to to reach that level um do you think there's any challenges that we come across to get to that stage of you know being independent and appreciate what's been given but not in a way that we have to continuously depend on it so of course like there are challenges along the way but that is the struggle that we need to take it has to it is not just a smooth thing that we just going to pick up there and then we go i could have you know been quiet not talking about any of these things and not work my way out make something for my own but if i'm doing that and millions of other african youths are tapped through brain drain you know are losing jobs every day are not having the same opportunity what do we offer to them or what do we offer for the future generation so it is a cause and it is a struggle that we have to take and the first step is how do we make sure that we move this kind of education system that we have we need to defeat the education system starting from the curriculum let us teach our children what is fit for purpose let the children be able to understand the values of the african continent they need to understand that it is skills that makes it out there they need to understand that education should be about creativity education should be about good leadership style but how can we do that if the education system itself is not designed to fit the purpose that we want and that is a development that is going to trickle down to the masses we can only do that if we well equip every individual that is the capacity building processes for instance making sure that people are skillful people are creative people should not be job seekers they need to be job creators we need to have good entrepreneurs we need to have good businesses owned by africans because that is what makes the money to stay so the challenge is that there is already a disconnection how do we unite the continent into one force how do we make sure that africans you know are f- happy you know meeting other Af- other africans africans are happy working with one another africans will be you know will work together through trade through investment and etc promoting that regional integration within the continent once we get that at hand we can easily tailor policies that are going to 
take us to where we all desire but as long as we have in this uh, disconnection problem where I don't understand my brother from Kenya I don't understand my brother from Malawi I don't understand my brother from South Africa I don't understand my brother from Sudan it makes it difficult for us so we the youths have to be connected through different forums where we can interact with one another to know the real problem of the African youth and therefore we can design the development that we desire as Africans. No, that was amazing, Osman. Just listening to you, I was actually relaxed in my chair, listening and nodding because, you know, you're, you're talking about things that we need to do, things that we need to try and, you know, work on, invest on and actually utilize because Africa is the future. I like to I like to believe and a lot of people like like to believe that also and we have a youthful population as well so knowing those two things is that it's just like we need to actually work on it and connect connecting is important networking as they say network is your net worth so I can go on for for a long time so now we're nearly there but recently um, we've seen that African Descent Society BC and African Descent Youth Engagement have offered to pay for your full scholarship for you to study in Rwanda. And I know in particular you want to go to Rwanda to study the Rwanda model. So now tell us about that and why Rwanda and why that particular model? Why? Thank you very much. Yes, uh, African Descent and Youth Engagement, all of them work together. And they've contacted me and gave me options to go and study abroad. And in those options were the United States, Canada, and London. And they will be able to pay. So I rejected it because I chose Rwanda. The reason is that Africans need to understand what we have as a continent. Rwanda is today a miracle in the African continent. They've passed through so many hardships and they've been able to transform that into something that is uniquely theirs. Transforming a country that was down to zero like 20 years ago. So you understand that that is the transformation that Africa needs. That is the kind of development that we need. A development that is, you know, within our own realities, within our own context. Knowing that we cannot just believe that there is that set of rules that we must follow no development has to be narrowed down it has to be tailored and it has to come from within so going to study abroad my degree may not even benefit me if i had if i am to do it in canada or in in london or in the u.s i know that they have good education system of course people have gone there and then you know have education come back and impact in the continent but we must also understand that 90% of our bad leaders today get their degrees from the Western countries. So it is high time that we value what we have as a continent. What I really need is to see the transformation in Rwanda, in the Gambia, in 10 years time, in 5 years time. What I want to see is to see the same transformation happening in Guinea-Bissau, in Guinea-Conakry, happening in Sierra Leone, in Malawi and others. That is the real African agenda that we should fight for. When things are initiated by Africans and implemented by Africans, it becomes something that is unique, uh, uniquely ours. But we cannot continue to copy in models that doesn't work for us. So, Usman, before I take leave of you, what do you think? You touched on it already, but I would like to know more. What do you think the youth need to do to contribute towards development of Gambia and beyond. Yes, um, thank you very much. Uh, we need to understand that we are not just the leaders of tomorrow, but we are even the leaders of today. So this continent really needs us as youths. But one thing that we need to do is to understand the real problem of the African youth. Why is it that we find it difficult to create jobs? Why is it that we find it difficult to be that creative enough to now that we have African youths that have traveled across the globe, they know every side of the world. Let us try to bring all those things back home and then to design things that are positively and uniquely ours. Be it from the Gambia or any other part of the, uh, of the African continent, 
we can always do it and that is the message that we should send to the outside world that once we have the youth well equipped with the quality education that they want having the african interest at heart then therefore we can work together and make massive production that is going to bring us the goodness or that uh, development all that we all need as an african continent so you come to realize that even in the gambia we have youths that are ready for this some individuals are initiating local businesses you look at them you see that they have good visions about how to make things but the problem is you know how do we get the support how do we make sure that we invest in the youths how do we make sure that we channel or we use those youths you know to go and inspire other youths to do the same work instead of you know using them you know on different purposes that is exactly what we need to do as youths and then form movement network with one another to make sure that we can all discuss things that matters within our own problems and then think about solution to those issues thank you so now this is my favorite part of the interview this is where i ask you your words of wisdom that you have to share to young people and to all kind of generations out there that can learn from you and um your experiences and your ideas on what you have to say yeah um thank you very much and you know it is going to be very very precise that us as youths us as africans it's high time we realize what we want as a continent what do we really want should we continue to depend on other continents should we continue to depend on other race and if we understand this we should be at the initiation process what are the plan for the next generation what are the plans for this generation if we understand all that we should be able to tailor a good development pattern for the african continent and then to understand that the youths are the very individual that should be the driving wheel of our development agendas and we cannot do that without investing in the youths they need to be well equipped with quality education and to every individual out there i always advise people about this that if you are in school if you are reading from all forms of education try to see what works for this continent try to see those things that matches with our reality we need to be able to contextualize concepts that we take from the outside world some of them are in their eurocentric views or eurocentric forms it doesn't work for the african society so we need to understand the african society itself before we can develop something that can be you know able to or that will be accepted by the general masses and everybody will work towards attaining it because once our development initiative comes from within people show responsibility they sh- it shows ownership people see themselves that they are the owners of it so they take part in it but as long as we import them we will not even understand it talk less of individuals accepting it at the grassroots level so to our youths our women out there we need to celebrate them a lot because they're doing extremely you know well in making sure that africa is a better continent so for those in africa and those in the diaspora we need to get connected and then to work together as a people so that was all we had for you in this session of coffee with i must say it was an interesting interview um i learned a lot from this young man usman ture and you know he's very very inspirational yeah and we can all learn from him and i'm pretty sure um you know he's always learning from us as well and um from what he said in his closing about the young people and you know what we should do is to learn the african model to learn the african society that way once we know what africa needs we will be able to help and contribute towards it so we can grow and develop make it the africa we want and so that's all i'm going to say um i'm now going to sign out i'd like to thank my camera lady ami so thank beauty by maria too for making me look this beautiful today um her makeup is flawless and thanks to usman once again for coming out to this interview i appreciate it thank you and bye bye Thank mm-hmm. you.